Final Cut Pro is my favorite video editing software. I've used and taught Final Cut Pro for the last seven years, and I just I kind of love everything about it. Like I know it gets sort of a lot of flack sometimes for not being as professional, but I think a lot of people who make that criticism probably haven't used the software very recently. And there's kind of an infinite number of ways that you can use and enhance Final Cut Pro to be even more efficient and meet your needs more effectively. So what I wanted to do today was share five things with you that I think are going to be really, really helpful. And if you use Final Cut Pro or you're just starting out with Final Cut Pro, they will make your life a lot easier. So these are five Final Cut Pro quick tips that I use in literally pretty much every project that I make with Final Cut Pro. My first tip has to do with audio, which is often overlooked when people start making videos. And the truth is, audio is half of video. So if you go into Final Cut Pro and you make a very simple command, if you press Shift Command 8, what you will see on the right side of the screen is that your audio meters will start to pop up. And you can expand and shrink your audio meters to your preference. I usually like to keep them pretty narrow over on the side, but I always 100% of the time have them on. And there's a lot of science that can go into audio levels, but in general, the rule of thumb is that you wanna keep your main audio levels between negative 12 and negative six. That's gonna give the viewer a really consistent, high quality experience. If you go past zero, you're gonna start clipping and your audio is gonna sound distorted and you're never gonna be able to fix it. And if your audio is too low and you try to increase the volume, it's gonna introduce a whole bunch of noise and it's never gonna sound good. So never forget about your audio levels and I would suggest never editing a video without your audio meters present. And again, that is just shift command eight to turn that on and off. My second tip is all about precision editing and that's frame nudging and frame trimming. So when you're editing your clips and you want things to really sync up with music or you're trying to match up audio and video, I see a lot of people, especially students when they're starting out with Final Cut Pro, tend to struggle and they're trying to just line it up by hand using the mouse or whatever. And that's really, really difficult. But if you use the comma and the period keys, you can nudge things back and forth one frame at a time. If you're editing a video and you're trying to sync up some clips to a specific song, so right now there's a snare hit right around this point where these two clips meet, but they're not cutting on it yet. It's a little bit off. So if I just select the edge of that clip and then use the period key to nudge over a few frames, I can then sync it up exactly how I want it. And you can also do that with, if you have maybe a B-roll clip or an audio clip and you want it to match up perfectly, you can use those same comma and period keys to nudge things back and forth so that they line up perfectly. Those little frame perfections here and there really add up to make a much higher quality product overall. You might think that people don't really notice it and no one's probably ever going to compliment you on how perfect your frame precision is, but it all does come together to create an overall piece that people do notice the quality of. One of the most frustrating but kind of rewarding things about video editing is when you do everything right and you put so much work into it, then people don't notice it. So it's kind of like the less that your viewer notices, the more that you did right. Because you want them to be immersed in the video and the story, you don't want them to be distracted by the technical stuff that went into it. And my third tip has to do with effects. Sometimes you might have some color grading or a preset or a LUT or a filter or letterboxing, some kind of effect that you want to apply to a bunch of different clips. And sometimes you might have a montage or a whole project that has like dozens and dozens of clips and you're clicking and dragging one by one to get them all on there. And I'm kind of embarrassed to admit how long it took me to figure out this trick, so I'm gonna share that with you right now. So in this project here, which was a vlog I made in Reykjavik, Iceland last summer, I stop talking. It's a graffiti, so it's really interesting. And then the music kicks in and there's a montage. One thing that I like to do is to letterbox my montages because it just sort of separates them from the other parts of a vlog. But instead of adding letterbox one to one, you just open up your effects. I'm gonna find letterbox. There it is. And then all I need to do is find the clips that I want to letterbox, highlight those clips, double click on the letterbox effect, and now it will have applied it to all the clips all at once. And you could do this by merging the clips all together in a compound clip and adding one letterbox, but I like to be able to go individually through the clips one by one and not only set the aspect ratio, but also adjust the offset so I can frame each clip and make sure they look as good as possible. I don't like to just add a one letterbox setting to my whole video because oftentimes that makes things look worse and it doesn't make them look better. 
but this will work with any effect, not just letterboxing. It's really, really helpful when you have a lot of clips that you want to add a color grade to and you make your preset and then you can just quickly add it to a whole bunch of different clips. And tip number four is all about compound clips. So if you have multiple pieces of media on your timeline, whether it's video, audio, whole bunch of whatever, and you want to smash them all into one brand new thing that you can edit singularly, that is called a compound clip. And it's super easy to do that. All you need to do is highlight the things that you want to merge, and then you can either right click and select compound clip, or you can press Alt G and it will create a new compound clip. You can give it a name if you want, and then there you go, you've got your new clip. That's a pretty simple trick that in and of itself is helpful, but where compound clips become really, really helpful is sometimes when you need to boost your audio a little bit because maybe you didn't have your audio meters up and the levels are a little bit too low and you're trying to adjust things. So when it comes to dealing with audio that's too low, I have an example clip that I filmed when I was making a video about ND filters for your phone. And I filmed this whole clip talking about the filters. Pretty impressive with these but as you can see when I play it, even when the volume's up, even though it is the level's really low. It's between negative 30 and negative 20. So sometimes you find yourself in those situations. In Final Cut, it's really easy to just raise your, your audio up. You can go 12 decibels higher. But in a clip like this, and even though it is kind of a hassle to have to carry more things with you, it's still a little too quiet. As you can see when I play it, the audio meter is still bouncing between negative 20 and negative 12. I would like it to be higher above 12, maybe closer to negative six. But Final Cut won't let me increase the level anymore. What I can do is I can go into the equalizer and add in some gain, but that gets kind of complex and adds in a lot of noise. Here's a really, really quick and simple way that you can boost your audio even further in those emergency cases when you need to. I'd only use this in an emergency, I wouldn't use it all the time. And to do that, all you need to do once you've increased your levels to the maximum amount that Final Cut will let you, you just create a compound clip. And when you create a compound clip, it sets the levels back to zero, but it saves them at the volume you had adjusted them to. So now I have 12 more decibels that I can increase that audio to, and you can see the waveforms are getting much, much bigger and it's looking much more audible. Out of your phone, if you're trying to film with your phone, it's pretty impressive what these small cameras can do. And right now the audio is exactly where I want it. It's right between 12 and six. It's gonna be nice and clear. It's not too loud, it's not too quiet. So that's not gonna work magic on totally damaged clips, but every once in a while, it can really save you. And finally, my last tip has less to do with the Final Cut Pro software itself and more with how you manage your workflow. So every video that I've made for this YouTube channel and everything that I've done for my actual day job in the past five years has been edited on a 2013 13-inch MacBook Pro. And this is like the mid-level model. I think it costs about $1,300 new. So it was not the most powerful computer in the world. It, I got it way before I started a YouTube channel, but everything, all hundred and something videos on this channel were made on this computer and it still runs great. I haven't done any modifications. It has eight gigabytes of RAM and a 256 gigabyte SSD internal hard drive. And it's got a 2.4 gigahertz i5 processor. So it's, it's a good computer. I love this computer. I have tried to upgrade twice over the years to like new touch bar MacBook Pros, but I spent so much money on them and they're really not that much better than this computer. And part of the reason for that is because of the way I've chosen to manage my data and all of my media files on this computer. Things are only on here for editing. The rest of the time, everything lives on external hard drives. And these are a couple of four terabyte traditional hard drives. But if you can get an SSD drive, a solid state drive, it's even faster. And that's going to help your workflow tremendously. So whenever I'm done filming anything, I take my camera's memory card, I put it in my computer, because the old computer still has an SD card slot too, which is kind of nice. And then I just take all the raw footage and put it in a new folder on an external hard drive. So my Final Cut Pro library where all of my clips and all of my projects and all of my important stuff is stored is not on my actual computer, it's on an external hard drive. And that makes a huge difference because it keeps all that stuff off of the computer, lets the computer run as fast as it's capable of running, and then everything is saved on a hard drive. With the cost of external storage being so cheap now, it's a really good idea to store all of your project libraries, all of your files, all of your raw media, on an external hard drive and keep those as backups. And that's gonna help your actual editing computer run a lot faster. The fact that this is a 
pretty base model computer from five years ago and it still works great to do all the stuff I need it to do every day. I even use it alongside an iMac Pro at work every day and honestly, I don't notice that much of a difference in speed. So it's not necessarily the power of your computer when it comes to video editing, it's how you manage your media. So this tip might not be Final Cut Pro specific, but if you start implementing smart and purposeful media management into your Final Cut Pro workflow, your life is gonna be a lot easier. And then what video would be complete without a bonus tip? So here's a quick bonus tip that you might actually not be aware of, which is if you're trying to incorporate still images into a video, or maybe you've shot a stop motion project where you shot everything on still images, Final Cut Pro can actually accept native raw files. So here I have a raw image from my Canon 6D Mark II, and I can drag that into Final Cut, and the program will just accept the raw file and I can use it and move it and edit it just like I would any still image in a project. This is actually an image of the computer lab part of my classroom when the building was still under construction. But once you have the raw file imported into Final Cut, you can go in and still adjust all of the settings, not necessarily with the same precision you would have in a program like Lightroom or Photoshop, but you can make some pretty good corrections on it. You don't need any other software and you don't need to convert anything beforehand. You can just bring raw image files directly in to Final Cut Pro. And I think that's pretty awesome. So I hope this was helpful for you and I hope at least one of these five tips will help improve your workflow and your editing experience with Final Cut Pro because like I said at the beginning of the video, I really love the software. It's genuinely a joy to use and I'm a huge fan of it and I kind of feel like it's the underdog in the video editing software space and so I wanna stick up for it whenever I can and fight for Final Cut Pro because I think it's pro good.